an endless, exhilarating land. Dynamic in the power within it. Rushing towards a future where foresight, planning, and modern technology converts raw resources into the power needed to help build and maintain a quality life in Saskatchewan. station isn't built overnight. It takes almost eight years of planning and building. It means thinking about tomorrow, the years ahead, the long-term future. And it means change. For countless years, the Poplar River meandered lazily through semi-arid prairie. It's farming and ranching country, but beneath the land lie vast deposits of lignite coal. The combination of coal and water spells power, and for the residents of the Coronac area, rapid changes in their community, their economy, and their lifestyle. Tests show that the coal seams near the Poplar River are approximately three meters thick and covered by 12 to 40 meters of overburden. This coal has a high moisture content, but is very low in sulfur. It is very similar to the coal mined at Esteban, where it has been used successfully for firing the Boundary Dam power station. Based on extensive tests and feasibility studies, the Saskatchewan Power Corporation selected this site for its power station. It is located 11 kilometers southeast of Coronac. Construction workers with heavy equipment moved onto the site in 1975. When completed, the river was dammed to create a reservoir 10 kilometers long. A surface coal mine was developed and a coal-fired thermal power station built. Each of the first two units at the Poplar River Power Station has the capacity to produce 300 megawatts of electricity or enough power to meet the needs of a major city the size of Saskatoon or Regina. Planning for this power station began several years before the equipment moved onto the site. Since it takes at least eight years to plan a new power facility and bring it into production, the corporation must be continually looking ahead at least ten years. Once it was determined that a new power station was needed for the early 1980s, studies were undertaken to select a location. The Coronac area was one of several considered. Studies were conducted to ensure that there was sufficient coal and water and preliminary environmental, economic, and social impact studies were carried out. In January 1975, a board of inquiry recommended that construction of the first unit of the Poplar River Power Station be undertaken. The landscape was not the only thing undergoing change. In 1973, the village of Coronac had a population of 330. It was a comfortable community with economic and social activities centering on its agricultural base. By the next year, when Karanak celebrated its fifth anniversary as a village, the community was facing massive and rapid change. There would be increased demands for services and housing, and social adjustments associated with the arrival of several hundred newcomers into the area. The impact on the community would be tremendous, reaching into the lives of most residents, to help plan the expansion of the community, a multi-agency committee was formed. It included representatives from the town and the municipality. Uh, the material here was mostly clay until we hit a gravel and coal seam. And uh, we had a great deal of problem excavating the thing due to a lot of water in the excavation. Uh, the structures you can see being constructed down there at the moment are uh, slide gates and uh, long The earthwork of the dam was completed in time to catch the spring runoff in 1976. Almost overnight, 
the meandering Poplar River grew into a man-made lake that was later to become the cooling reservoir for the power plant. When the reservoir reaches its maximum height, the water will be 14 meters deep at the dam. Trees will be planted, the water will be stocked with game fish, and over the years, it will be transformed into a recreation area. At the site of the main structure, the foundations are laid. 11,000 cubic meters of concrete have gone into the building thus far. And then, the steel begins to go up. Water from the reservoir will be pumped into the power station, where it will be used to cool and condense steam from the turbine. It will then be returned to the reservoir. A riparian outlet installed through the dam maintains water flow for downstream use. The spillway will be used primarily to handle the influx of spring runoff. Since the Poplar River flows south into the state of Montana, Water must be of acceptable quality for downstream users in both Saskatchewan and Montana. The upstream side of the dam is riprap with rocks to protect the earth dam against erosion from rising waters and waves driven by prairie winds. The Morrison Dam and the Cookson Reservoir are named after early settlers who homesteaded on the land now dominated by the reservoir and the dam. The Poplar River facility is the first power station in Saskatchewan to be built using the metric system. 6,300 tons of structural steel went into the making of the building and the six cold storage bunkers. The massive size is necessary to house the steam boiler furnace. It is the equivalent of 14 stories high and will be erected here, inside this vast steel enclosure. The location of a coal-fired power station is crucial. It needs coal, water, and less obvious but important, it needs the support and services of the local community. Nearly 400 million tons of lignite coal lie beneath the ground in the Poplar River area. The coal is being recovered using strip mining techniques. This was the beginning of the giant walking drag line that is used to expose the seams of coal. It took 18 months to build this innovative machine. When finished, it became one of the six largest in Western Canada. The Bucyrus Erie drag line was named Great Gus in honor of a pioneer homesteader at Karnak. Great Gus took its first giant step in September 1979. In this unique process, the drag line lifts itself on two rectangular shoes, moves ahead eight feet, and then settles down on its base until it's time for the next step. It has a walking speed of 0.24 kilometers per hour. controls 
and the oiler looks after the daily maintenance. Things are done in a big way at Butler River. The size of the drag line speaks for itself, but the coal shovel and haulers are also impressive. The large chunks of coal are trucked to a primary coal crusher and then loaded into rail cars for hauling to the plant six kilometers away. There is enough coal in the Poplar River area to keep two 300 megawatt power units operating for 100 years. aesthetically pleasing state of productivity. At Coronac, the greater part of the mine area will be returned to agricultural production. In the reclamation process, the spoil piles and ridges are leveled to a rolling terrain with slopes ranging from 5 to 9 percent. The prominent slope, formed by the first box cut, is being leveled to a final slope of 15 to 20 percent. In a crucial step of the reclamation process, Topsoil, where it is found suitable, is stockpiled and will be reused on the newly formed slopes to support agricultural production. Twelve hundred tons per hour, two million tons a year. That is the amount of coal that is consumed by each 300 megawatt unit at the Poplar River Power Station. provides the fuel. The reservoir supplies the water used during the cooling process. And it is here, inside the power station, that the energy of the coal is transformed into electrical energy. Here in the turbine area, man is dwarfed by the magnitude of the cavernous structure, the thousands of feet of pipe, and the giant turbine. coal is crushed and pulverized until it is as fine as face powder. It is then blown into the boiler furnace where it ignites. As the coal burns, it boils the water in the boiler pipes, turning it into high pressure steam. The steam is used to drive the blades of a turbine, which in turn rotate a large magnet inside a coil of heavy copper conductors, causing electricity to be generated. The spent steam is cooled and condensed by water pumped from the reservoir. It then returns to the boiler to begin another cycle. A transformer boosts the electrical voltage and it is fed into the provincial electrical system. Since electricity cannot be stored, it must be used the instant it is produced. Control centers in Regina, Saskatoon and Esteban monitor and regulate the flow. Poplar River Station is one of the most modern stations in the network. Traditionally, coal has been considered a dirty fuel. Techniques and modern equipment have been developed to reduce undesirable effects, and these have been built into the Poplar River complex. An electrostatic precipitator collects 99% of the ash, soot, and other particulates produced during the combustion process. The waste gases are discharged through the 122 meter high smokestack. The smoke coming from the stack is practically invisible except in the winter when condensation of moisture in the plume may be visible as a white cloud. As the coal burns, a heavy ash is produced. It is collected in a hopper beneath the boiler furnace and sluiced to a lagoon. The carrying water is pumped back to the plant through a closed loop ash system. Some experiments have been carried out using the ash residue in concrete, mining, and road construction. 
Air samplers in the Karnak area and across the border in Montana are monitoring the amount of suspended particles, sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxides in the atmosphere. Monitoring within the emission stack helps ensure that discharges are within the acceptable limit. The making of a power station is more than machine and modern technology. It also takes men and women serving in diverse capacities. In 1977, the number of people working at the power plant almost equaled the population of Karanak. To reduce the impact on the town, a construction camp to accommodate 500 workers was set up near the power plant's main structure. As the station grew, so did the host community. In 1978, the population of the town had exceeded 700, and Coronac officially changed from a village to a town. By the early 1980s, the population had swelled to 1,200. The town prospered, housing starts were up, a new trailer court, apartment building, and motel were constructed. There is a new fire hall, credit union building, cafe and recreation center, and a new water treatment plant. It's a different kind of community now. The days when most families have known each other for generations are gone. Coronac has become a town of newcomers, and it's no longer solely a farming community. As the newcomers settle into their new jobs and homes, and as they begin to take part in community and local activities, the feeling of community spirit is being rekindled and nourished. And for the young people of Karanak, new employment opportunities have been opened up by the power station sitting at their doorstep. Karanak is a good place to live, and it is becoming a major trading center in the southern part of the province. Yet the benefits extend far beyond the Karanak district. The electrical power produced by the Poplar River Power Station makes it possible for the Saskatchewan Power Corporation to meet the electrical needs of the residents of Saskatchewan during the 1980s. Some five years after the first heavy equipment rolled onto the Poplar River site, the plant became operational. The Poplar River Power Station is online, serving the people of Saskatchewan.